Welcome back to another episode of the Roblox Studio Tutorials. In this video, I made an objective system that you can use in your game that features tweens, animations, and a whole bunch of other features hopefully you find helpful. We also have the optional task, but we will not do that currently. So we have touched the three task, automatically switches to the next objective. Now it wants us to touch this yellow part back here, and we touch the yellow part, and we've completed this task, and it goes away. That is all the objectives that we have coded up in the game. Let me show you how it works. So we're going to go into the starter player scripts, which is where I have this objective objective, which is just a test objective. In this code, we're starting a new objective. Now, if we head to the place where we store all the objective data, so here is the play with the blocks objective. We have these task sequences up here, which is not as confusing as it may seem. It just displays which order those tasks will be in. So this is the main task, and these are the optional tasks. These need to be sorted properly or else it'll confuse the whole system. Take that into account. One other thing I would like to explain is the parameters and value variables. We have three different types of parameters. We have distance, goal, or pretty much just leave it empty. And what the distance does is that it updates the objective every frame. So like you say, you have an objective or you have to walk somewhere. It's gonna say like you're five studs away from red park. So if we head out of the script and we go back into the blocks objective, next up, I want to speak on the objectives framework, which is the primary thing that's important important here. I said out of the script, I'm just go up here and replicate a storage and modules. And let's go to the objectives framework. The first function that we want to talk about is the stage objective. That's the function that starts the whole objective itself. We're getting the player. We're checking if the player currently has an objective. If they do have an objective, we just go ahead and warn that they do have an objective. We're not going to overlap. But if they don't, we check if the objective ID is an actual objective. And once we you know, go through all these if then checks, we actually stage the objective, which the events manager is right below this module script. And it's this right here. This is pretty much the player is accessing this module script on the client. So we're calling some fire servers, which are just pretty much some remote events and remote functions. And we're getting that fire server on the service script service objective handler script right here. So if we go down, we see this stage objective on server event right here. And we're also setting some values on the server side because if we do this on the client side, it can be easily manipulated and we really don't want that. And we are setting the current objective that we have to the objective ID that we pass through. Now, if we head back into the script and task completed, we pass in the task ID, red, green, blue. You see this box folder, red, green, blue. We are first checking if that's an actual task that we have created or that we have set up right now. And whenever we generate a task, we create a new task frame and these task frames have a whole bunch of attributes and stuff to them. And then we set the attribute completed to true. And then we just get rid of the description. I'm going to show you what that looks like real quick because it might seem a little confusing. So let's play again. We see the task touch the red part 19 studs away. Now, if we go ahead and touch this part, we see that the task is now completed and the icon has changed and the description text below the task has been removed. If we head down below that, we have task progress set. So as you see with the optional task, collect the blocks. It says move all the blocks inside the white circle. Every frame, the counter is looping through every single one of the red, green, and blue blocks and it's checking how far away they are from the circle. And if they are inside the circle, then we update that number, which is one right there. And if we hit the second one, we'll see that it goes to two. Now heading out of everything, we've touched a little bit on the modules. We touched a little bit on the remotes. Let's head down to the profile handler. And within this profile handler, every time a player is added, we're adding this profile that is under the script. In this profile folder is a whole bunch of values like completed task, create objective, objective active, or objective completed, and total task. Exiting out of that, we're going to go into the last bit of stuff that I want you to take from this. It's just like a config file. So let's say that you wanted a different icon to pop up when you complete a task. You can change that in the decals here. I try to make this as advanced and like future proof as possible, but everybody's project is different. Moving on, if you want to see how I made this system where NPCs only move towards the player when they look away, click the link in the description. 